Hello guys, welcome to another video session from Karim's Biology. In this session, we will be learning about excretion and release of substances in plants. Okay, so let us start the session. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Now the big question is, do plants excrete like animals? Children, we have seen in animals that starting from protozoa to mammals, they are well organized and they have their own excretory organs. Some of them have very simple excretory organs such as protonephridia and nephridia. Whereas some of them they have very complex excretory organs such as metanephridia and also uh, you know kidneys. Okay. And uh, like that of the animals, plants also perform metabolism. And as a result, the nitrogenous wastes, they are also formed in the plants. Is it not? As they perform metabolism, they also perform different life processes and metabolic waste is commonly found in the plants also. Okay. Then how do the plants excrete? Do they have any separate organs for excretion? Have you seen any excretory organ specially meant for excretion purpose in plants? No. Generally plants do not have specific organs to excrete the waste material. And when you talk about the rate of formation of waste material, when compared to animals, which are metabolically very much active than the plants, the plants break down the waste substances at much slower rate than animals. As a result, what happens? The accumulation of waste in plants also is very slow. Is it not? So, nitrogenous wastes, water and carbon dioxide, these are the general wastes that are formed in plants okay now how these waste materials are removed children generally oxygen is not a waste material but when the oxygen is in excessive quantities then that is surely a waste material and when is oxygen formed oxygen is formed during the process of photosynthesis in plants we knew that because of the splitting of water molecule oxygen is formed and uh, out of the oxygen that is formed in photosynthesis, some oxygen will be utilized for the process of respiration and the excessive oxygen will be removed through the stomata by the process of diffusion. So this is how the O2 molecules from the leaf in which they are formed, they will be left leaving the leaf. Okay, that's about uh, uh, removal of the oxygen. Then how do plants manage or send out the waste products from its body? I told you about oxygen. Then what about the water? You know, plants continuously absorb the water through their roots. When they continuously absorb the water, they consume some amount of water and excessive water present in the plant body should be removed. And there are two processes by which the excessive water in the plants can be removed. The first process is transpiration. You already knew about transpiration. The transpiration is defined as the process by which the plant body releases water in the form of vapor through its aerial parts. Aerial parts are leaves, right? And you knew that leaves have stomata. Excessive water, it will be removed in the form of water vapor through the stomata. This process is called transpiration and this is how the excessive water in the plants can be removed. Now let us talk about the second process by which the excessive water is removed. The second process is called guttation. It is a simple process where in this process secretion of water from the leaves occur in liquid state but not in vapor. In transpiration the excessive water is lost in the form of water vapor whereas in guttation process the excessive water is secreted from the leaves from the edges of the leaves in the form of water droplets because they have some pores at the edges which are connected to the xylem in such a way the water will be secreted in the form of water droplets okay and this usually occurs in the grass you would have seen that at the tips of the grass leaves sometimes you would have observed this type of water droplets okay that's about guttation then what about the waste that is formed especially nitrogenous waste material okay as the plants do not have any separate mechanism for excretion and organs for excretion waste products may be stored in leaves bark and fruits okay when these dead leaves bark and ripe fruits fall off from the tree then waste products in them are also eliminated 
so in this case plants act in a very intelligent way what do they do the waste material as they do not have any excretory organs they transfer that waste material to leaves bark and ripe fruits and when these fruits are ready to fell or when this leaf leaves and bark when they are removed from the plant body the waste present in the leaves also will be get rid of so this is one of the way by which the plants remove the waste material especially nitrogenous waste material okay but some plants cannot excrete all the waste material so what do they do simply is that they store that waste in their fruits in the form of some solid bodies these solid bodies one example for that is raphides okay and raphides are needle shaped crystals of calcium oxalate can you see the raphide here yes this is and this is the enlarged raphides these are a uh, needle shaped crystals which are occurring in clusters in various tissues of some of the plants including colocasia colocasia is one example of the plant where these raphides are stored okay and where are they present they are present in the leaves roots shoots and fruits also okay this is how some plants store the food, uh, waste material in the form of raphides now come to the next one some of the plants they synthesize several compounds for their own use especially for defense so some of the plants they convert the waste material into some other chemical compounds and they use that chemical compounds for their defense the chemicals that are converted from the waste material they are stored in the roots leaves and seeds of these plants and uh, they will be useful for the protection against the herbivores because these chemicals that are stored in the roots leaves and seeds they are unpleasant to taste so herbivorous animals they cannot eat the leaves of such type of plants because those chemicals are toxic and they are unpleasant and those chemicals may even kill the animals if they eat them that is why some of the plants they convert the waste material into toxins okay and they store them in their leaves and also in other parts of the body so that they can get protection this is how they manage that waste material okay and some of the plants what do they do is they secrete chemicals when injured right these chemicals seal the wound and help the plant to recover from an injury you can see a tree here there is an injury on the stem of the tree from this injury you can see secretion of some chemical here this is a sticky chemical this is what some plants do they will convert the waste material into this type of substances and they will use them for their own benefit okay for example here the wound is formed if that wound remains open then that is the site for the entry of the parasites right so the plants now they seal this wound by secretion of this type of gummy substances and because of this the wound will be sealed and this helps for the healing of this wound very quickly and safely and not only that some of the plants release attractants for other organisms which will help the plants for pollination especially the plants which have to attract the insects for pollination okay honey bees butterflies these insects they visit the flower why do they visit the flower for the purpose of nectar and the plant has to attract that because the plant also is getting the benefit in terms of pollination that is the reason why they release this in the form of some chemicals so that they are able to attract the insects and uh, um, some of the birds which help them for seed dispersal okay and now come to the next advantage some plants that have root nodules you know the plants that have root nodules these are the root nodules the plants that have the root nodules are leguminous plants so the leguminous plants they have root nodules and to form the root nodules first of all they have to attract the bacteria called rhizobium bacteria which is present in the surroundings so to attract that rhizobium bacteria to the root these leguminous plants they secrete certain type of chemicals into the soil which are called secondary metabolites and these chemicals attract the bacteria so that the bacteria come to the root and the bacteria start forming the root nodules and the bacteria help in the synthesis and the fixation of the nitrogen to this plant okay now i have told you about metabolites what are metabolites you already know that metabolite is an intermediate or end product of metabolism you know catabolism anabolism several life processes chemical reactions are occurring in our body all that together called metabolism 
and when the metabolism is happening several intermediate or end products are formed during the metabolism or after the metabolism those chemicals are called metabolites these metabolites are divided into two categories they are primary metabolites and secondary metabolites what are primary metabolites primary metabolites are the metabolites which are directly involved in normal growth and development of the plant body okay so they are helpful for the plant for the normal growth and development say for example carbohydrates fats and proteins they are helpful for the plant to grow and to develop this type of chemical substances are called primary metabolites which are directly involved in the growth and development of the plant whereas there are some other type of metabolites which are not required for normal growth and development they are called secondary metabolites the examples for the secondary metabolites are alkaloids tannins resins gums and latex that is about the examples of secondary metabolites okay children that's all for today in my next session i will explain one by one about the secondary metabolites what are alkaloids what are tannins resins gums latex we will be discussing about these things in my coming session okay children that's all for today i will meet you in my next session thank you for watching